So it's 2021, and I believe that we shouldn't have to keep updating our Go tests manually. I've been thinking about this problem a lot, and you're probably familiar with Go tests like this, where you're calling a function, you're getting back some data, uh, you've got you know some desired data, maybe you're using Google's comparison package to, to diff those two, and you know you get a some output that, that looks something like this whenever you go and actually change your the behavior of your Go code. Um, the thing about this is that once you agree with these changes, once you like these changes, you're really left to your own devices to then go and copy each of these and you know actually get them into your code. And that can be a quite tedious process in my side projects and in my work day to day at SourceGraph, I find that there are a large number of very complex data structures that need to be updated. And I spend a fair amount of time just going through the motions, copying that over, rerunning Go test, and you know, essentially just wasting a lot of time there. And so I've really been thinking about how this could be automated. And here's kind of the solution that I came up with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give the value that we want a name. So I'm going to do autogold.want, and I'm just going to give it any unique name. It just has to be unique within the scope of, of this test. So since I don't really care here, I'm just going to call it my value. And then instead of calling the Google comparison diff function here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call want.equal. I'm going to give it t and then the value that we actually got. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And let's just go ahead and rerun go test. So we can see essentially the same thing as before. Some of the fields, the intention has changed here, so that's different. But overall, just we see that you know some new fields have been added here. They've been populated, and we're we're good with these changes. Now, instead of going and copying each of these over, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give go test the update flag, and what this will do is. It actually went in to our test.go file and just updated all of these for us. So this is all valid Go code. This works with you know, unexported fields, unexported types. It works with very complex Go data structures. It works with you know, really basic values. If, if you can give it a name, then this thing will update it. So, what we saw here was you know, essentially the same thing. It was just saying that these tests failed for this reason, and then it went and updated those. So if we run go test again, we'll see all the tests pass. Now, another situation that I often run into is that I don't want my test data side by side with my code. And this is a pretty common pattern. Um, in the Go community to, to use .golden files. These are just external files alongside your, your tests that you know just have the desired value. And this is actually made really easy to do here as well. So instead of all of this, I'm just going to do autogold.equal. I'm going to give it T and then the value that we got. And just going to remove this folder since I was running this before. And so now we can just do go test. And so we'll see here that essentially it's trying to, you know, say that we've got an array of persons and we want to go and, you know, populate all of these. And all of these lines on this diff are additions since there is no file, I just removed it. So what I can do now is I can go ahead and do go test-update again. 
And what we'll see is that over here in my editor, we now have this golden file. And this is Go syntax. And exactly the same as before, this is all completely valid Go code. So, you know, if I change my mind, it's easy to copy this back into my test. And yeah. So that's it. Um, I hope that others out there find this as, as useful as I do. Um, I spent a lot of time just making sure that this is really robust. I'm sure there are cases that I missed. So if this looks interesting to you at all, I would love for you to try it out and let me know how it works for you. Um, you can find the project here on GitHub and you can follow me here and I'll have links in the video description. So thanks a ton and keep safe.